Hello and welcome back. For this recording, you will need your journal and a writing instrument because we are going to be exploring some of your emotional memories and where they are stored in the body. What we are looking for is we want to start to deepen that connection from the last episode. We want to start to deepen that connection with our body, with our somatic intelligence. And the reason is, is because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes anxiety is a result of repressed emotions that are trying to come through, that are trying to let us know that something is wrong. But because of our relationship with our body and our relationship with our emotions, we silence it. And so then the body and the emotional response within us tries to communicate through things like anxiety. And so we want to understand where there are gaps in the feeling of an emotion, where there are gaps in memory. Because what I have found in my coaching practice is that this starts really early, even in teenage years. And what happens is that there is this hyper intellectualization and a distancing from the emotional experience that is too overwhelming. And this results in some pretty profound disturbances later on in life. It can, it doesn't always. This is the theory behind the exercise because what I want you to do is I want you to bring this exercise to our one-on-one session so we can start to go deeper and find the root of where the anxiety came from. I have my own hypothesis based on our consultation and getting to know you, but this is untested right now. And we, through our collaboration together, will explore it and refine it and discover it together. So please, if you haven't already, pause the recording, grab your journal and a writing instrument, and let's get started. Now, the very first thing that I want to teach you is a grounding exercise. And the purpose behind this is that there is this concept called flooding that we want to avoid because you're on your own right now and you're using an accelerator such as psilocybin in a microdose form. So it's not a lot, but it's enough to make these memories easier to excavate. And I like to think about it as though you have a closet in your house. And let's say you live in a southern part of the United States. I'm not saying that you do, but let's just say that you do. And every winter you like to go skiing with your family. And over the course of your entire lifetime, you have held on to your ski clothes and your skis. And so over time, you dedicate a particular closet. And because you live in the South, you don't go there often. You only go there when you need to, and it just happens to be very rarely. And so this closet starts to get fuller and fuller and fuller with all of the ski outfits that you've ever owned in your life. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to go around your house randomly opening your closet doors and letting all of the stuff come out before you're ready. And so this grounding exercise, if you find, and remember, I am anticipating that you are the captain of your own ship and helping with the pacing. I never want you to go too far, too fast than you feel ready for. But if you get close to an edge of overwhelm, which is possible, I want you to do this exercise. Put everything down and stand up. Close your eyes, 
bring your attention to your feet, which are firmly on the ground. If you're wearing shoes, I want you to feel the soles of your shoes, the thickness of them, the softness of them. If you're not wearing shoes, I want you to feel the texture of the ground on your feet. I want you to feel the steadiness in your legs. Now open your eyes and look or go and walk to a clock. or look at a watch, your phone, whatever it is. And as you're looking at the time, I want you to think about the list of things that you need to do today. And it can be as simple as what you're going to have for dinner or who you need to reply back to. And then as you come back into your head and come back into the reality of the moment and your life, what you'll find is that this disconnects you from the emotional experience. And so any time that you're working with the mushrooms and we're doing this work, all you have to do is that simple exercise. This is called living in our heads. And when we live in our heads, this creates this distance, which can be a wonderful coping mechanism for managing our emotions in day-to-day life. But for the long term, it actually creates problems because it disconnects us from actually doing the work. But the issue is, is that our psychology dictates and our life circumstances too, dictate the pace in which we can do the work. And the mushrooms don't inherently understand this pace. And so when I talk about us being the captain of our own ship, this is what I mean. We have to regulate our own emotional experience when working with the mushrooms. Now, let us begin. Please, Go back into a seated position and let's start breathing. We just want to center our awareness on our body and our present surroundings. And if there's any sort of chaos that's existing around you, if there's any sort of busyness, just let it be. Imagine that you are creating your own bubble, your own sphere. And this is sacred work. This is a sacred conversation that you're having with yourself. So let's feel a moment of appreciation and admiration for the intelligence of our bodies and the wisdom of the mushrooms. And just keep breathing for a moment and complete present awareness. And let yourself Relax. Let yourself be receptive. And let's open our internal ears to what our bodies have to tell us and would like to share with us. And this exercise can be repeated for different results as you continue on your journey. Let's start with an easy one. Think about and recall the last time that you felt satiated. And as you recall that time, think about the sensation that you had in your body. 
This is just an example. So you don't have to write this down. But what I'd like you to do is take this example and extrapolate it to the others. So when I think about the last time I was satiated, I think about this morning, which wasn't that long ago. I guess actually now that I think about it, I'm still satiated. I had oatmeal and coffee for breakfast. And the oatmeal with a little bit of pumpkin seeds and walnuts, cinnamon and ginger, was just perfect for helping me feel perfectly full, not over full and not hungry. A beautiful feeling of satiation that'll stay with me for some time. How do I feel? Well, it's hard to describe in words, but I will do it the best that I can. My stomach, and this is what I would write down, my stomach has a pleasant feeling of fullness where it was just the right amount of food, not too much and not too little. And that happened this morning. So we want to record when the last time was. This is important information. And the physical sensation to the best of your ability. And if you have no physical sensation, if it is an intellectual only experience, then that is what I want you to record and put a star next to or something that we can remember to talk about in our session because this is where the void is. We want to find the void areas. And if something was a really long time ago, this is another void area because it means that you're not presently in tune with that emotion. And we want to explore why that is. Is it because of suppression? Is it because your life really doesn't have any stimuli that are associated with that particular antecedent, to put it in behaviorist terms. In other words, maybe your life doesn't challenge you in a way to make you feel things like grief or anger. So now let's explore the first one. Again, an easy one. Think about the last time you were happy. How did that feel and when was it? And please pause the recording until you are ready to move to the next one. Think about the last time that you were sad. How did it feel in your body? And when did it last happen? Think about the last time you felt grief. How did it feel? And when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt irritated or annoyed. How did it feel? And when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt angry. How did it feel? And when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt rage. How did it feel? And when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt powerless. How did it feel? And when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt scared. How did it feel? 
and when did it happen? Think about the last time you felt weak. How did it feel and when did it happen? And as an addendum for this one, what does weakness mean to you? That's all we're going to do for this exercise as we start to scratch the surface. Let whatever memories come, whatever moments, whatever communications that your body has, and don't judge any of it. For advanced work, you can repeat this, but instead of the last time, think about the most intense time. Because often this is where we break. And this starts to get at the root of things. But if you don't want to do that unguided, you don't have to. We will explore it together in future sessions. I hope this has been helpful. Take care and we'll talk soon.